starts. This starts, and uh, let's do these. Brutality speaking. Brutally speaking. Brutally speaking. Oh, I thought it was. Yeah. Oh, all over my new Janet shirt. Now it's all over Janet. Whatever. I it's all over like, her. I feel like that's how she likes it. You want to hand me a beer, right. please? Yeah, I can do that. Hold my mic. For sure. Huh? Hopefully, if it comes out. If not, well, that's a. Oh yeah. All right. This week. Yeah. This week. Cool. Very apropos for those listening. Oh, that sounded beautiful. There it is. There it is. You want to get another one? Yes. It's around, so. Well, hopefully I didn't just ruin a nice twenty dollar bootleg shirt. Nah, man. <laughs> nah, we'll get it. We'll get it cleaned out. I don't know how. Uh, how. Uh, uh, you know, just these mics pick up. Oh, that's that's a nice thing. Is I have you on full on, just usually typically like, you would like a yeah. nice finger like dick length away from your face. Cool. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> so I have the pleasure uh, this ap- this evening actually at this point uh, of talking to Judge Smith, drummer for Mothership. And uh, you guys just got done playing here in Grand Rapids, Michigan at the intersection at Elevation on the Overkill Death Angel Tour. Yeah, man, it's kind of funny because uh, we did we weren't sure where we were going to end up, uh, you know, on this. Uh, we didn't realize that we had played here with Crowbot and Wilson for that Drunk as Shit Tour. Played in the, the small ago. room. Yeah, yeah. Right not, to, not to be a dick about it and be like, you <laughs> no, played no, no, the small no, room. No, no, no. It was one of our we're, the very first, you know. It was, uh, so it was a kind of nice... Uh, you know, blast from the past a little bit. Speaking of, you know, that was the last time, first time of uh, actually getting to meet you, all of you. Uh, other than the Wilson dudes, all of you stayed in my house uh, yep. for I think yep. about two I days. Yeah. And uh, even went ahead. I nice think you were wearing a like a throwback Michael Jordan jersey. Dennis Rodman. Dennis Rodman. That's, that's what it was. Name. Yeah. <laughs> um, I would never wear Michael Jordan. Too too obvious. <laughs> I wear Dennis Rodman. <laughs> I mean, he was the the protagonist to, to, for me oh, personally. Yeah. To uh, did learn. you did you his thing about LeBron the other day that he said about no. him and Scotty would have just shut him down. Oh, sure. LeBron's got no moves and and <laughs> when he if he plays with physical defenders he gets really agitated really quickly. Yeah, and yeah. LeBron for as much as LeBron should be like a uh, Barkley in his prime kind of a player. Like yeah, really, like yeah. kind of lean but tall and can yeah. bang bodies and so yeah. forth. Like LeBron he should bang be. Around a lot. He doesn't like it. Yeah, yeah. There are some for players as big as like he is, Kobe man. loved contact. Yeah, like for as thin as he was, Kobe loved contact. Throw thrived on it, and that's how he you know made his career. Same like Jordan. Yeah. Yeah. But I mean, we're not necessarily here to talk about LeBron, Kobe, and uh, we could Michael. we probably could for for hours. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but. Um, um, but yes, the Drunkest Shit tour with Wilson and Crowbot was uh, how you were introduced to me and my wife and. Uh, a lot has happened for you since then. I mean, you guys have done a yeah, fuckload man. of touring. I mean, it's been it's been kind of wild. We put out a couple records since then. Been to Europe a couple times since then. Um, uh, yeah, man, it's just kind of it just keeps going, man. <laughs> so we're uh, riding the riding the wave, you know, just uh, keep pushing, working. It's funny because uh, your label Ripple Ripple Music uh, here in Michigan, there is a band down in Kalamazoo, uh, Bonehawk. Uh, yeah. your label mates with them. Yeah. Yeah. And so I was familiar with your label before knowing who you were because of them. Yeah. And it was one of those things where I kind of pre-assumed what you would sound like. Yeah. And the Drunk as Shit tour was a very interesting collaboration of sounds because it's like you got I can't think of like a better three-headed monster. Yeah. Where it's like Wilson kind of has that dirty southern kind of rock and roll excuse me a vibe about them yeah there's you guys who were kind of more in the stonery drunk as shit was one of those tours where you realize you're going to be buddies with the guys in the For band life. so you just want to spend a couple weeks with the you know making friends with uh yeah what i loved about that though was the camaraderie on that tour beyond just everything but like as i know like toward the end on the what, cor- like i have a drunk as shit tattoo right here like there's like 14 of us that all have the same i have a chris <laughs> tattooed basically yeah, underneath yeah. my butt cheeks uh when yeah. i went out to austin yep. and uh but no like the interesting thing about that tour was seeing all of you guys basically jam out at the, during crowbot set and i always yeah, thought that man. was pretty cool yeah yeah that was uh that was one of the very first um where we just like like it was like a total bro down you know like the whole time like we were all just you know that's one of those things where you don't know who you're going out with? Who is it? Um, but you're all kind of I don't know who is it. Oh, oh it's Kells Bells. What's up, you bro? Come here, man. <laughs> Come here. Come talk to me. Say hi. Say hi. Say a little me. something to the camera. A little something to the camera. 
a little something. <laughs> check one, check two, check one. Uh, check. <laughs> yeah, what, what, uh, camera one, camera two, camera, camera one, one, camera, camera two. two. Camera All right, one. yeah, good, uh, <laughs> good Wayne's good, World good. joke there, bud. Good, good, good. <laughs> but, um, no, I mean, like, the thing that was pretty interesting about that tour is, you know, you guys were already kind of ending your, your album cycle and getting ready to, re- I think you, I can't remember if you had already recorded or were recording what would become uh, High Strangeness. Yeah, the the High Strangeness was kind of strange because we were we were touring so much and just trying to just get out there and play in front of so many people that we uh, we did High Strangeness. I think like came home off of a COC tour and basically like put together not wrote. I don't I don't want to say wrote because we had some ideas. And stuff to put together, but uh, in like 19 days. Oh wow! Yeah, yeah, for 800 bucks. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck, really? Yeah, dude. There's, uh, there's. Uh, okay, so uh, um, down in um, San Marcos, uh, Texas State, uh, Ryan from Crip Trip. Oh, okay. High Strangest was his senior project. For <laughs> what the fuck, really? Yeah. Uh, Firehouse Studios, which is uh, old uh, Stevie Ray Vaughan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, stuff like that. They have bats in the attic and shit like that still. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, 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 yeah. There's a, um, but yeah, like 19 days, 19 or 21 days or something. There's something about Mothership that I, I, I love because, you know, as we were talking about earlier, because you had kind of made the reference <laughs> to me that you're like, I don't really know that Mothership's kind of a, a band that would fit on this podcast. And the funny thing to me is about it is, like, you know, I was telling you the other day we had a really nice day, so I threw on some, like, Double Trouble, some Stevie Ray Vaughan, yeah, yeah. some Fabulous Thunderbirds, kind of was in that just kind of jammy, you know, really bluesy mood. Because uh, to me, that that's what encapsulates, you know, nice drinking weather and all, so forth. It's definitely, yeah, definitely blues, fun, you know, that. Uh, but the interesting thing about your band, beyond the fact that it kind of has that sound, is the fact that it seems like even in the recording process, you're very much kind of like a throw and go, just, hey, man, like, Let's we just fucking make some tunes. Absolutely, man. And like, really, like, uh, Kels, just uh, <laughs> that's how we do every. Yeah, like we, um, we're a total like jam band that spends a lot of time like in the jam room and things like that, and coming up with the. Uh, um, and Kelly is really such a like a Robin Trower or like. Oh a, yeah, he just was here. Um, oh yeah. Uh, yeah. Not even. I don't think like a week and a half ago. Yeah. Yeah. But like we'll sound check to uh, Bridge of Size dude, okay. like all the time and just like because it's fun, man. And Kels gets to just like rip up basically like I think I don't I can't confirm this, but I'm pretty sure it's his favorite song to play on guitar. OK, <laughs> but yeah, yeah, just kind of that. Yeah, yeah. Super blues bass. Like we like to jam. That's where all our that's where it all comes from. So, you know, um, so like timeline like that isn't really a big deal because that's how we did everything to begin with, you know? Is it... You know, what was kind of interesting about meeting you when I did is I feel like, and correct me if I'm wrong, it felt like that was kind of the shift for the band from being kind of a, a thing where we tour sporadically to now being we're we're kind of turning that corner and trying to make this be a thing where we can make this a career and we're going to start touring a lot more because... Yeah. It seemed like at that point, after that drunken shit tour, like you were saying, like you did a COC tour, like you did Ship Rock, you did a couple of European t- shows and so forth. It seemed like that really was kind of the turning point for your career. It seemed. Well, we were still in 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 that in that time. We were still like progressing as a band. You know what I mean? Figuring out each other and figuring out ourselves and everything. But like from day one, we have always been like three dudes that just like jam, right? And come up with tunes based on that. You know. So like the touring and the. And the everything, like, we've always had it in mind to make that simple process be, like, who we are to grow, you know what I mean? So so then if you can come up with, like, the, the you can make the, the guys in the band click like that on the jam and, and write good tunes, then you can just go out and, and just put them in front of people, you know, and really, like, but then you believe in them. At right. that point, you know what I mean. So it's not like, uh, like we almost—it's almost like a flying by the seat of your pants type <laughs> of vibe, really. That's why it's so genuine. That's why people are like, "You guys are so like." It feels like you can fall off the rails at any moment. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's just that's kind of that's kind of the band we are, you know. Just uh, 
What is it like being in a band with brothers? Especially since you're half of the rhythm section of a trio with one of them. I don't think that I've ever felt like I wasn't one of the brothers. <laughs> you know, so uh, it's uh, it's like, yeah, so it's like fighting with your brothers or like, uh, you know, like doing anything with family. Right. You know? It's, uh, um, we have an incredible support system, you know. What is, and, oh, sorry. Yeah. No, no, no. I was going to say, yeah. what is, uh, I mean, you don't see many power trios anymore, especially in, in rock music. I mean, the foundation, I think, as far as the songwriters, maybe drum, bass, and, and a vocal yeah. and a guitarist or whatever, however that happens to land. But you don't see traditionally many bands like yourselves anymore. And it kind of makes me wonder, what are some of the the adversities you think you go through with being a trio? It, as far as that... Just anything. I mean, whether it be like in a touring capacity where there's only three of you, because I mean... Let's be real. Uh, in touring, I would look at that to, more as uh, really with us, man, more of an advantage than a so? than a than a detriment, man. Okay. Honestly, um, we all we've I mean, we're at this about a decade at this point. The three of us, like, and we've had other people, you know, good people out come out and you know try to work for us and with us, and uh, but we just uh, we like kind of just working together, the three of us, and really like. Uh, um, Kelly, Kelly, let's talk about it. It's like, uh, so we're all grew up, you know, playing sports okay. and comp- that competitive, uh, attitude and, you know, um, so we treat it that way. So we band together as like a team, you know what I mean? And we don't, you know, we would, it, it would be nice <laughs> to have, you know, everything just like taken care of for, you know, or whatever. But, um, yeah, um, maybe I've, do you feel like that makes yeah. you appreciate more of what you have because of absolutely more of the sacrifices yeah. you guys absolutely. have to make and the fact that it is yeah. the three of you leaning on each other to, to yeah, more absolutely. of a tripod, I guess? It creates like a like a real link. Yeah, absolutely. You know? Um, yeah, we're all very supportive of each other. We all work really hard together for each other. You know? It's like uh, something that we started and, you know, and decided kind of together through like lots of you know <laughs> hard work to let's go out there the three of us and just be like our band you know i remember i remember when you guys that. came around the last time speaking of the devil i remember the last time you guys came around you were there. I know he's there. you were uh in the van in your in the middle of summer and your ac broke down and i just kept thinking to myself how fucking Come on, brutal man, I can hear you. how brutal that would have been um it ain't bad man smoke a lot of weed and hang out and <laughs> tell jokes Here's, here's something I'm going to ask you a real question, and it might be the only, like, serious, serious question I ask you because the internet was fucking pissed at this. And so was I. And, and talk, yeah. actually, I was I talking... Do, I think I might have a good answer for you. Okay. I was actually talking to a friend of mine today about this, and he was still fired up about it. And it's been over a year, I think, at this point. Yeah. So, Metallica, the the... the the holy grail of touring opportunities. Metallica holds this contest to. Let's cheers to this because this, we're gonna get real. This, I promise this will be the only hard, the only hard question for you. The only hard question for you. So Metallica hold, holds this this. I don't even know if it was an open on uh, an open contest or how this this started. Um, all I saw was that basically in the the Dallas or Texas region. Yeah. You had won your area and moved on into the the further part of this this contest to open four dates, I think, for Metallica. I think was what it was on their their Death Magnetic or whatever fucking tour it was, and you guys made it basically to the last two. You were you made it that far. Yeah. Okay. So basically, how it started. To my, we have a friend, Debbie Sexton, local radio station. Oh, it does like the the local um, on the ninety seven one the Eagle back okay. in Dallas, um, and she hit up Kyle and was like, "Hey man, I think you guys should just put your name in the hat." <laughs> and you're <laughs> and like, like, "Okay, cool, now. yeah," and did that, and then it became like more of a real thing that I think we were ready for, and that everybody else was ready for, and then from what I know, and I don't know this to be fact or anything, somebody uh, uh, got a hold of 
uh, local H, who are and those guys are great, man. And like, sit, you know, not taking anything know, away from them. We've no, we've talked to those guys since then, and like everything. Like you gotta understand, man. Everything from that is cool, man. It's, it's not no, a hundred percent. But it became like a comp. You know what I mean? Competition. And then through whatever happened, whatever happened, we didn't end up winning. You know, but it's not. Yeah. I, uh, yeah. I think the thing for or like, there's no like beef or like no, 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 yeah, no, no. or like I think the thing, animosity about any of that. I think the thing from my perspective, as someone who knows you guys personally, yeah. But I think that looking, there were so many people rooting for us to maybe do something wild like that, and then it, it you know, whatever happened, happened. Now here's here is we're my, not upset. <laughs> yeah. My yeah. thing is this is. It was supposed to be for unsigned bands, from what I understand. But if that's the case, then neither one of us should have been in it to begin with. You know what I mean? But okay, so piggybacking off of what I said earlier, where a friend I mean, of mine's don't band have a gold Cal- record, but where a friend of ours, friend of mine's band from Kalamazoo, is on your label. It's not putting them down in any you know stretch, I mean? or it's not putting you down for being on the same label. But it's and like maybe if- my thing is this: if you've been on a major label. And had a hit that most people, as soon as you were to play it, be like, do you know this? Oh, yeah, That's I know this song. song though, it is a great song. <laughs> you should be excluded from the contest. Yeah. And as I, mean, I was telling my friend whatever. today, I feel like you guys, I feel like Metallica. We looked at it as like, an, like this band's got a gold record. We're going to go out and, and <laughs> <laughs> we don't look at it that way, man. I promise you. I it's, just, it's just weird because it's like, I feel like. That's a situation for me, like where like we looked at it as a sense of You were of pride Rudy. You were Rudy in that situation. Where we stand up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. Like you were the yeah, underdog yeah, and like I was yeah. rooting for you. I wanted to be Debo in yeah. the stands clapping for you. But going, I think maybe that it made everybody root for us harder that we lost. You know what I mean? Which ain't a you know, either way, it ain't a big deal and it ain't gonna stop us from, you know, being who we're gonna be, you know, so I saw that Lars sent a message to you that you guys reposted, basically saying like, "Hey, you know, it was a good, good, uh, yeah. good contest." Blah, yeah. blah 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 blah. You guys are really great. Yeah. Has anything and come I feel of it like, other than that? And I feel like for a band like that, that is such a huge thing, like Metallica is, that maybe it wasn't. You know, it's 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 got to be hard to put a, that much stock into. A band that you know nothing about or just came out and you know what I mean? And just the fact that they acknowledged that we were involved and that we made it such a weird competition is enough for us to like, you know, it's fun. And we've talked to the local H guys and they're great, man, Scott. They're all fucking, you know. um, So you guys need to go on a Bury the Hatchet tour. I mean, I yeah, we'd go out with them. Yeah, for sure, man. Yeah. I mean, whatever's clever, dude. We're, yeah, we're about it, man. What is, other than obviously the, the large thing, what is something that happened as a result of that that you guys were shocked that became a, uh, of that situation? I don't know, man. The internet comments during that time were kind of weird. It was, I felt like it was more people like, uh, so like during that, like all the bands were like talking to each other and like, the okay, other bands we're, during the contest? Well, just like, uh, like, uh, um, like really just like, uh, Scott, local age talking to, um, like, hey, man, we're cool, right? We're not really, like... Oh, okay, fighting, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. You know? <laughs> so during all this, like, in the internet, it's kind of like... Like, fans are fighting fans. Yeah, yeah. And stuff like that. And then we're back there, like, tech... Yeah, and like, hey, man, we're cool, right? Like, there's no... <laughs> and we're like, no, it's no... Yeah, I don't know. That thing kind of... Um, it got a little bit... I don't want to say out of control, but just, like, uh, more than maybe what any of you know and really if you want to and no disrespect to any of the other bands but i mean i don't yeah what was because it's just it's just not a it's not a big deal if i remember correctly you guys ended up losing to local age we had a lot of fun doing that no for sure and i it was crazy we had a lot more fans we gained a lot more fans fucking around doing that (laughs) Isn't it interesting? And gain that- friends out of like local age guys around, you know what I mean? Guys around the scene for just like doing it, and then being like, yeah, whatever, man. It's not gonna. We're not banking our whole <laughs> <laughs> career on opening up a couple of shows for Metallica, you know, which would be great. But 
at what point does it go from like walk me through the process where you're like yeah fuck it like this is just a, know, a thing we're, we're doing in a band and we're just like hey man you guys want to try to open up for metallica we're like yeah fuck it let's go dude like we're on tour right but i'm saying like <laughs> so we're when doing it like started cell phone videos and we're like we're not gonna let anybody beat us you know what i mean and that ties back to like the the sports mentality yeah, like, yeah. that we grew up in you know what i mean like that but it wasn't like fuck them it was almost like pro wrestling. it was just like <laughs> you're cutting promos <laughs> I mean, I guess we were just kind of sending it a little bit, you know, and just, like, seeing what happens, you know? But it wasn't, like, bad blood or, like, no. anything weird like that. It was just... It was I wish more people understood that about that whole competition. I, it wasn't, like... Like, we were... Yeah, we would have loved to do all that, and we wanted to do all that, but it wasn't... <laughs> like, we got fucked. <laughs> <laughs> Has anything... Has any interesting opportunity presented itself because of that? I mean, yeah, we're touring with. <laughs> did Overkill? Did Overkill? Like, metal uh, legends right now, dude. So I think, yeah, I mean, we're doing all right. <laughs> yeah. You know, kind of speaking to that, actually, you know, you guys got that opening slot uh, recently for COC. You did the opening slot for COC, and then those are our. Uh, it like seemed like that tour cool really kind of has opened a lot of doorways for you in the last like yeah, year and a half or so. um they really uh they really took us on uh took us um under their wing you know what i mean um really that's a funny story man how we ended up getting involved with that um uh, we played a a show in new orleans siberia for like 12 15 people maybe <laughs> on that tour, just you no, 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 oh, okay. no. Way before, oh, okay. way before. Oh, like, no, before, 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 before we. Uh, and a friend of ours, Jenny Green, was at that show. Okay. And uh, yeah, man, she let us crash at her house, and then asked us to move a couch for <laughs> Pepper. <laughs> In the morning, she's like, "Yeah, I gotta go move this couch or something like that, man." I yeah, I may not get it totally right, but. Um, we were all we all looked at each other and we were like Pepper Pepper who, <laughs> and uh, we didn't end up moving the couch, but uh, she passed the word along, you okay. know, and they liked the band, and then gave us a shot. That's how we've really got a lot of these things, man. Is people are just like word of mouth people, you know. Well, I mean, we were we were talking earlier about you know sort of about that and, and saying that uh, you know because you guys just got done wrapping up the uh, COC Crowbar tour, which. I mean, by all accounts, everything I saw, like, if it didn't sell out, it was so fucking close to selling out. Like, you might as most well have called did, it a man. sellout. Yeah. yeah, most of them did. And getting to open that tour, I mean, you're looking at, obviously, you are had already toured with COC, so, like, there's familiarity there. And then you're now getting to open for Crowbar, which, I mean, that fan base is a little bit different, but those kind of in the same band. Man, Tommy, fucking all those motherfuckers, dude. <laughs> they're, they're so cool, man. That was, uh, yeah. How many beers can Kirk hold in his camo shorts? A baker's dozen? <laughs> I tried counting Several. one day during the hate break tour here. I was um, like, how many beers yeah. do you have in there? No, Kirk's, Kirk, all those guys, man, they're they're all really, uh, they're really genuine people, man. You know what I mean? And they've, they, this is clearly like a career for them. And they've yeah. worked so hard and they, they're legends to us, man. You know, it's like, uh, like Bucket List, being able to, like we'd sit around before we had done anything mothership talking about wanting to be able to get around these the people that we're around now you right. know so um yeah what, man what do you learn from you know touring with coc a band and crowbar even or now overkill and death angel bands that have been around for 30 40 years what do you learn from them as they become not only your peers but your your equals for lack of a better term <laughs> The first thing that comes to mind, dude, is how to how to tune my drums. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if you want to be honest, honest, like we were, yeah. I mean, yeah. That is a thing you can do, by the way. I, there's a dude here locally. I remember one day going to see a friend of mine's band practice, and I had never seen a tuner or a drummer tune his drums to the yeah. the the uh, tuning that the band was in. Yeah. And I was like, "What the fuck are you doing?" He goes, well, "I don't want to say that. Yeah, like that. I know what I'm doing, <laughs> but you figure out how to pitch match. And, right. Yeah. And <laughs> it's a thing that I don't think people realize. Like shit. Yeah, yeah. I think yeah. it's a thing people don't realize that yeah. you can tune drums to to be on on in tune with yeah. the rest of the instruments. 
I don't do, uh, I don't go that far. <laughs> yeah, I just tune them to sound, yeah, just to pitch match and, you know. And then the front of house guy takes care of the rest. <laughs> Not tonight. <laughs> Your monitor just went out. Oh, yeah. Well, that was, uh, that was a, uh, that was a microphone issue, but, uh. No, man. I mean, uh, jokes aside, just how to, like, um, I don't know. Those guys really do it, like, they believe in us, man, and it helps us believe in us, you know? It's, like, a really genuine thing. You learn how, uh, what a small world it is. Absolutely. Yeah. What, uh, I mean, it, it seems like you guys are just at this, I will say, almost paralleling what this podcast is doing, and I'm not trying to parlay it into the same avenue at all but I mean it is kind of about you know we were talking earlier about networking and just every opportunity you never know what it's going to become of it and it seems like you know because of the drunk as shit tour you guys came onto my radar and then over the last couple of years I followed what you guys have been doing and, and yeah. been very invested in, in watching you grow and, and feeling I think we bonded over a love of every time I die and lip biscuit also oh, man every time I die is my I mean I have a portrait of Keith on this leg right. so I mean do we, you really oh I do oh, do man. I need to pull it out and show you on camera I mean I, yeah I mean we right. could trade ridiculous tattoos right oh, now let, if you let, want let's, to <laughs> I'll, and then I'll show you the one Chris Bishop did on me in, right. in Texas got, yeah, it's yeah. Texas <laughs> it's a Texas tattoo uh, on top of that I see it Oh, wow, man. Hey, that's good, dude. <laughs> and I just got Aaliyah like that's a month actually, ago. Those are good. Wow. <laughs> and I have those Steve are, Perry and uh, Freddie Mercury on my leg, too, because I love the, no the movie shit. so much. Wow. Wow. And then here's the one that uh, Chris Bishop did while in Austin. Oh, no. Bishop, he does good work, man. Yeah. He's got a soft touch. I like him. I like soft him. Soft touch. I got a couple I... Uh, you know, as you know, I have the Grave Digger. The Grave Digger! Undertaker. Across my chest. <laughs> yeah. Um, and I'm sorry for the partial yeah, nudity for those know. that might be watching us on YouTube. Oh, yeah. Those are those are better than mine. I don't even want to show mine oh, dude, anymore. Oh, you want to see some bullshit ones I got? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I mean kind of. There's a fucking... Yep. Uh, <laughs> Your money's on the dresser. <laughs> How about the blue waffle on the other side? <sighs> okay, I just got one. Uh, here, hold. Uh, I got this one in Pittsburgh. Uh, best Behavior. Oh, instead of worst behavior by Drake. Um, that's a with an alien. That's Garth Algar. As Eddie. Yeah, uh, it says I like to play. You know. Oh yeah. It's a combination. Of, Here's uh, a fun fact. Here is a fun fact about the guy from the. Uh, you're like, amazing dude. You're like amazing dude. That yeah, guy who was is that guy? so my so my mom loves General Hospital. Of that, course she does. Yeah, I, she probably doesn't watch it anymore, but which is way easier now because of DBR. But whatever. Um, <laughs> So, that guy in General Hospital got his head cut off and was in a garbage can in one what? episode. Yeah, he like in real life or no like, in, uh, in, oh. the, in the show. And so, like shortly after seeing him in Wayne's World, I was like, "That's that guy." They got his head cut off in, in the. Oh, okay. So, so, so he's so he just like his head cut off in General, General Hospital. Hospital. He's always been that dude in like. I've in, never seen an episode of General Hospital. Is you're not missing like, much. John Stamos came from General Hospital. What is it like? Uh, it's Modern like Grey's Anatomy. Uh, it's like Grey's, Grey's, Grey's it's like Anatomy? it's like Grey's Anatomy meets like. I've never seen Grey's Anatomy. Either. Okay, my wife loves. My wife gets me into the most garbage shows. She pays the cable bill, so I'm always like, I can't, bitch. <laughs> what is the it, you know what, as a, as someone who has a wife? What is the worst show you have to watch because you're like, all right, like let's let's go. Oh, we do. My wife, my wife has pretty uh, good taste. Good taste, man. We like the same stuff. Dude. Have you seen Ozark? Okay, yes, I love Ozark. Oh, season two. Yeah, I'm trying to think how we we do so much of that, man. Binging. Um, yeah, man, all kinds of stuff, dude. So we'll even watch like <laughs> we get so weird. Like my wife and I love like drag racing. Okay. So we'll so you wa watch RuPaul's Drag Race. <laughs> I mean, like so I'm talking like no, I dumb know. shit, like <laughs> fucking like redneck fucking street outlaws, like dumb. All right. Um, but so you're not you know, those like arm wrestling shows. That no, we on, watch like... we watch weird shit together, man. We just, yeah, we smoke a lot of weed, <laughs> <laughs> and we yeah, um, Game of Thrones mostly. You know, obviously. Um, I'm trying to think of the worst one. She don't really make me watch anything, man. Oh, see, I get to watch like Teen Mom, Teen Mom no, Two, and uh -uh. Lindsay Lohan, something Beach Club, and so politics irritate me, and she really likes to keep up with that 
Oh. So I like to make fun of people just to irritate her. So she'll sit there and be like really like about like what's actually going on in the world and I'll make fun of it. Like like a like an asshole. <laughs> Do you feel like you actually have maybe more of a, a better perspective on that because of the opportunities you get to travel internationally and abroad here in the States? Maybe. Um I I I I mean I don't like, want to speak too much on that because I don't really think that I I've definitely seen a lot of different places. Um but really what I gather is like man if you're cool you're cool. And wherever you're at, if you're just like cool like with the salts of the earth, the type of people that are coming to your shows and the type of the people that I'm around when I'm out there. If you're just, you know, if you're just nice and you learn how to say, hey, do you speak English? <laughs> <laughs> or just like, you know, um, yeah, that's something, um, yeah. I don't know. I'm I'm a goofball for the most part. So, I, yeah. What so I is just try to keep that. As someone who, you know, obviously listens sounds like you listen to this podcast or at least are aware of what we do. What, uh, you know, cause I spent uh, a trip out in Austin. So I, I actually went to Texas Yeah, and, uh, it, it's weird. It lives up to the hype of <laughs> being yeah. interesting. Yeah. Um, what is, are you going to talk about Texas? I'm not going to talk about Texas per se. What is, uh, what is one of your favorite beers that you've had going out on tour? So I drink, uh, I like drinking like Mike's Hard Lemonades. All right. Shit. So you like icing yourself. <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah. It's refreshing. Okay, on a that comes day. from, and my, if my pop ever sees this, he's going to hate this. <laughs> he likes drinking like fucking like all that shit sugary sugar belly yeah 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 yeah, yeah. beers make him sleepy <laughs> <laughs> okay <laughs> so he'll drink yeah and that's kind of and you know apple doesn't fall far from the tree i guess so you just drink a bunch of sugary alcoholic drinks get wired up and then just <laughs> that's why we do jaeger bombs you fucking dick <laughs> I get it Shut now. Up, man. I get yeah, it now. Yeah. I get it now. Because it had Red Bull in it. That's why you like them. All right. What up? Look, man. <laughs> it makes so much sense now. I don't want to do whiskey. Let's do tequila because I can have, like, the sweet and the... I get it. Yeah. All right. Yeah. All right. All right. Yeah. Yeah. What, uh, you know, something about being from Texas that I find really interesting is, obviously, the Pantera connection. Obviously, you have a Cowboys from Hell tattoo. Yeah. Um, do you feel there is more pressure on you being a rock and roll band from Texas because of the lineage of Texas rock bands? Not really, man. Uh, I think that a lot of people feel like that they need to okay. be because of who Pantera was and who. Um, but what we've gathered just kind of being ourselves is that it attracts more of the real deal, like... Um, like energy of that more just like being our our kind of thing than trying to be Pantera would. Gotcha. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's it's one of those because I feel like Michigan's really um, weird because like we have I feel like you know, I said this on a podcast a long time ago, or I feel like I'm in a unique position because Michigan has put their stamp on rock music or heavy music over a lot of decades. We have Ted Nugent, we have the MC5, oh, yeah. we have like Absolutely. Black Dahlia Murder, yeah. we have, you know, Battle Cross, we got, you know, we All have kinds a, of bands. Greta Von Fleet now. Like, bands, we man. have so yeah. many bands that yeah. cover a lot of the rock metal yeah. territory. And probably, I mean, shout out to Machine Shop, probably one of the best rock venues venue. in, in the country. You know what I mean? As far as like uh, people and, uh, you know, I love the fact that, like, for those, you know, it's it's one of those, like, doing this podcast, listening to a lot of podcasts, having a lot of friends who tour and so forth. Like, I'm very aware of a lot of the venues in town. Like, one of the, or not in town, in, in the United States. One of the venues everyone loves is the Norva <laughs> in Virginia. 
because I got hot tubs and they treat bands really good. I've never been there, dude. Ah, you'll get there eventually. <laughs> All right, man. Maybe yeah. one night Metallica. Put that run. on the universe. Dude. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Putting it out there. Um, you know, the Norva is like one of those legendary venues. You got uh, what is it out in? I think it's out in Portland. Maybe not. Uh, the one with I'll the. I'll tell the you one of the coolest things we've ever done, and we didn't even have to play a show. Was just like. Talk about the haunted pool? No, like casino gigs, dude. Oh, I hear there's like give you stupid you money in there. I'll just give you whatever you want. Dude. Yeah. <laughs> even if you're not, we were just part of the tour package and they gave us whatever we want. We didn't even have to play. Like, <laughs> <laughs> wait, 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 hold on. You were part of the tour package and you didn't even get to play? Uh, see, uh, Connecticut. Is this the COC Crowbar or just COC yeah, you were, guys? They were, they were playing a show and it was a day off for the rest of the bands. Hmm. And they just put us up. Like, yeah. Did you, did you want anything cool? Any free slot play or anything? We pretended that we were gambling for free drinks. Here's, here's a really fun... Here's, <laughs> here's a fun story, speaking of that. So my wife and I got married... You know my wife. My wife and I got married out in Vegas uh, around Christmas time, yeah. uh, on the 27th. And we went out to Vegas, and some of our family... Like, both of our parents came, and some of our other uh, immediate family came out. So my wife's like best friend came out, nickel and dimed it to death, got a Christmas bonus, ended up making it out there. Doesn't know how to gamble. Like, and I, when I say like doesn't understand how gambling works, like doesn't know how like to fucking play slots even. Like, yeah. I don't know what happened. So in Vegas, at least, and a lot of other casinos, you go, you go to the bar, you you put like a twenty spot into the video poker, or whatever, you get free drinks. I guess so, I don't know. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So the, pro tip, pro tip then, pro tip. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Go to Vegas. You put twenty spot at least into uh, in the video poker at the bar rail. You get free drinks. That's how it works. Huh. Or you go to uh, the the casino like customer service thing and get like a card and you get free slot play and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. And you can win like free buffets and all that kind of stuff. Works really well in Denver. We went to this little hidden spot. Got like so many free lunch buffets. Yeah. Ate like kings and yeah. queens. Um, so anyway, <laughs> she only our friend only put like a ten spot in or a five spot or something like that. And the bartender was being fucking shitty to her. Yeah. She, like, cried, like, left, like he was being a fucking asshole. Yeah. So we lost her. We find her, and I swear to God, I have a photo somewhere of it, and I'll have to post it on, on the, the podcast Instagram page. I don't know what she – she wasn't max betting. She I don't even know what she was betting. Somehow she was in something – and hit a progressive jackpot for four grand. <laughs> now, mind you, someone who was what? like barely made it to Vegas for our wedding then wins <laughs> a jet. Like, and then she was like demi mooring it and fucking indecent proposal, like just fucking putting her money in the like the the freezer in her like hotel room. Yeah. And you were, we were just like, what the fuck? Yeah. And it was one of those things where it's like you know sometimes like crazy shit happens to, to a, good people. I got my my best friend in the world back home, man, and uh. Um, he uh, he ends up winning like slots like that. Like, okay. Just like uh, um, but he's the rain man of slots. Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, but it's based off like uh, where where they're at in the. Uh, um, oh, in the he's he's one of those. Yeah, and like uh, I don't I, I don't even think he knows what he's doing. <laughs> Okay, and so he's full he, of shit. He's that type of guy. Dude. Okay. He's just, he's, he's, he's got, there's something about him. He just, you know. Um, but the best, I think the best casino story I got, and one of, one of my favorites, is uh, we're sitting at a bar in Connecticut with the COC dudes, and Woody is pretending to play the video Blackjack. And I'm winning money, like, the whole time playing video Blackjack. And Woody next to me is like <laughs> yelling for no reason, and then ordering a drink, and then uh, so we, me and yeah, we drink for free all night. Because he's he's cheering and he you didn't up. Put in a dollar. <laughs> just how he was just like reacting to like this t- table, this this video that, that wasn't even working. He was dude. your hype man. And clearly the bartender knew that we were there, and we were, we weren't just like the regular, you know, right. Um, but yeah, he's, we spent hours sitting at that bar pretending to play <laughs> video. <laughs> yeah. 
I ended up winning like 80 bucks, nothing special, you know. Hey, it's 80 but, bucks that you didn't but, have. Yeah, hype man, totally, yeah, sh- yeah. Fucking he flavor flaved you. Yeah, Woody fucking, yeah. <laughs> and then drank fucking, yeah, just drank for free all night, dude. It was, uh, I've got, I'll show you, I got cell phone footage of that. That's I'll awesome. I'll show you later, yeah. So, something that I, I, I found interesting about you, um, correct me if I'm wrong, very, uh, You've had a long-time girlfriend that you recently married, correct? Uh, we got married, what, three years ago, maybe? Okay. Facebook's a weird thing. Like you, It seems like yeah. it was not that long ago, and then you see, yeah. like, uh, Facebook. We've been together about a decade. But okay. Same yeah, with my wife and I. We're, we're coming up ago. on uh, four years in December. Yeah. So, cheer, cheers to that. I think you got married right, yeah. A couple, uh, yeah. You um, didn't go to jail, did you? No. Okay. Well, I did. Uh, no, there you go. You know it's meant to be. Just, Ride or die. Just throw it out there for everybody. Everybody knows I went to jail. Right Something I, uh, I was talking with, uh, and this name may not mean anything to you, but I was talking with Maddie Mullins, a singer from Memphis Mayfire, uh, a couple of weeks ago. And we were talking about just the, the struggles of being in a committed relationship, given the, the lifestyle uh, of being in a professionally touring band. And something that I, I talked about with him is the fact that, and I was talking to you about this earlier. I was wondering when when you were going to get real um is the fact that you know obviously i quit my my normal nine to five to to pursue this podcast and and to see where it takes me um and as such i've been trying to find a nice balance between pursuing my passions and finding balance in my home life yeah and i feel like it's something that i i want to start maybe exploring with other guests who are kind of in the same position where you have the, you get to quote unquote, live the dream, but there's a lot of sacrifices that go into it and so forth. So as someone who's still in a relative, not a new marriage, not a new relationship, but a new marriage and so forth, what have you found to be some of the keys to a successful relationship with, for you and your wife? First, of, I, don't, I got really lucky, man. Uh, my wife toured in a band. Okay. So she kind of, uh, funny story, man. Our very first record, we wrote that record to open up for my wife's band. Really? Before she was my wife. I didn't even know her at the time. What did, what did she do in the that vir- band? The Virgin Wolves. She's the front. Uh, yeah. They toured, uh, they did some shit with the darkness. Oh, that... Um, did they do yeah. that Fozzie uh, Darkness yeah, tour? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, um, okay, that's why I know that band name. But, okay. uh, um, yeah, man, um, I don't know. I got lucky with her. Um, I, I don't have any answers for anybody here. <laughs> I just, it, it's one of those. I, that okay, I'll tell you. FaceTime, man, and... Uh, you mean tug time? No, no, I mean, like, spending <laughs> time with, like... Uh, that was a joke. Um, I feel like yes, any adva- yes, any and, advancement uh, in, in technology and, uh, has always been to from, a- uh, Valiant Thor, man. One of his, uh, <laughs> he's got like six rules of touring, and number one is find a way to jerk off. Yeah, but um, I wholeheartedly back that. <laughs> I've always I have oh, always man. said that any advancement in technology has either been backed by the porn industry first, or has been spurned on by people's horny levels. So. When you can send picture messages, what well, was that's the first thing people started doing? The, the uh, development of uh, the cell phone. Exactly. Is when, uh, yeah. Look at that picture well, messaging. What was that used for? To, to fucking send nudie yeah. photos and then. So you need bigger screens and yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. All I know um, is they're comproof, just like no, Dave Chappelle said. As far as like, I don't know, man. And I'm not, you know, it hadn't been perfect, dude. And ah, uh, it's uh, really faced. Uh, I don't know how to answer. you you hit me with one, dude. Okay, uh <laughs> yeah. even he's laughing. Where are you at? You just keep popping up, dude. Oh, well, I had to go get some fucking loot, bro. Ooh, shorts. Party shorts. Oh yeah, he's got some Four sitting shirts. yeah. New fucking merch. Yeah, nice. Yeah. You got hooked up too. Cool man. Go snag some shit. Yeah. <laughs> I've heard it, yeah. A weekend and you're just now getting merch? Isn't that how it goes? You do merch no, trades. Ran out. Oh. Um, yeah, we've been waiting on it. Um, no, I'm, I'm really FaceTime, dude. And uh, um, we have a daughter. Yep. And I spend a lot of time talking to my daughter. You know? 
So today, spoiler alert for, I mean, by this point it may already be out before this one. No, no, sorry. Um, I was supposed to talk to Head and his daughter today. Uh, yeah. Brian Head Welsh from Corn and his daughter, they put out a documentary about uh, Brian's career in How Corn. How old is his daughter? Uh, per an interview I saw that came out in the beginning of this year, she was 20. She turns 21 oh, in like June or 20, July. Yeah. So Dylan, she's, she's still pretty... Dylan's 10, man. So uh, so in the beginning of that, they were... Uh, in the beginning, it was a lot of like magnets and like stuffed animals and stuff like that. Uh, souvenirs from the road? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, souvenirs and stuff. And now it's turned more into like she wants to like... So like today, um, FaceTime during like setup. Okay. For setting up the drums and doing sound check and all that shit. Um, and I'll just set up the phone and she just watches, you know, she's, she's so smart. She's, you know, um, so stuff like that. And really doing that with our daughter keeps me and my wife doing, uh, um, um, that's a better answer than what I gave you. Earlier. No, for sure. It's, Do you, are you encouraging, I mean, the day and age now where, where it's obvious that there are a lot of avenues, multifaceted avenues to get into music, uh, be it a light lighting production, you know, teching and all that kind of stuff. If, you know, she's kind of more interested in, in that kind of side of things, are you kind of encouraging maybe going down the avenue of, of you know, being in a I've, band or something, touring? I've never really pushed her to do uh, to do anything like that. Um, I've pushed her to be smart. I push, I push grades. I want her to, um, yeah, I just push her to be smart and read, study, and make good grades to, to the point where she can make has more options to make her decision when the times the time comes to make that decision you know um like right now she's uh she's all about like north norse mythology okay and she uh she's you know reading a bunch of books about all kinds of you know um is it funny to see <laughs> that's just so that's that that stuff is so like personal to me. I yeah, it's hard to it's hard to talk about. <laughs> I can yeah, I can see by your body to, language. It's it hard is. to talk about, man. Yeah, it's yeah. it's one of those though, like. But yeah, it's man. It's a part of your love. Dude. It's a part of it's your love, life, dude. and it's a part yeah. of the other side of being in this profession yeah. that I don't think it's talked about a lot. I don't push her to. I don't want her to to do any. Yeah. Not that I don't want her to. Right. But. I guess kind of in closing because I don't want to make you feel that's, any more awkward. That's so, that's so, pers- that's so yeah. deep, man. That's so personal, man. It's just, it's one of those for me. Like, I I think one of the things I realized is I, to, to kind of yeah. be personal with you and whoever's listening to this, I, I won't cut this out. Um, growing up, I met a lot of women who were strong and very who knew who they were and knew that yeah. they didn't want kids of their, yeah. like to, to have their own, like they didn't feel the need to, to procreate and, and add more to the, to, the, you know, just because of like, Oh, we need to, we need to have our own. Um, and it was something that initially was something that growing up, I was like, Oh, I need to have kids and they need to be mine and like all this kind of stuff. Yeah. And now I've kind of grown up and, and kind of around a lot of strong women who were just of the mind that it's like, I mean, there's plenty of kids who, who aren't wanted. So, like, if worst case, like, I'll adopt and so forth. And, and that's kind of where I'm at with my wife now, even more so to the fact that we're just kind of, like, with me doing this and, and the kind of the life we live. Hey, man, whatever you decide, <laughs> I, you be, you'd be a good pop to anybody. I, with whether they... Uh, I know I'm good yeah. with kids, but I also know that right now, like, I'm yeah, very man. selfish and I want to do things yeah, for me. That'll, those things change, man. We'll see. And they start to, like, mesh out, you know? <laughs> and you start to figure out how to do, you know, both. Like, tying back to FaceTime, man. Like, uh, like that's what we do, you know? And, like, I've got magnets and all kinds of bullshit from, like, all over the world. That is just like, uh, yeah, man. It's, uh, it's, that's a cool adventure, man. And you meet a lot of these guys around here that are, like, career 
dudes and a lot of their shit is maintaining and careering for like like so they have good shit at home you know right um um like I was talking to a buddy and I won't mention names or anything but it's doing a whole fucking like a flat Stanley thing and I've done I've been through all that you know what I mean and um yeah man that's a really personal thing that like a lot of guys like us you know we get out here and we don't like to talk about you know um not that we don't like to talk about I was going to say, it's, it's not so, that you don't like to talk about it. It's, it's, it's so obviously personal. personal. Yeah. Yeah, it's so personal, you know? I guess my yeah. thing is just, I like, I kind of like getting to the meat and potatoes of and like. you can't explain it to anybody else until it actually happens to them, you know? And that's, that, that, that kind of, you know. I guess but, kind of a shared experience of, you know, we were talking about the Jamie Josta show earlier and something that he commonly echoes is Absolutely. you know I did all of these tours I did all these shows on birthdays holidays whatever and it just yeah. wasn't fucking worth that's it that's the worst part of 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 what yeah is you, I miss stuff but thanks to like FaceTime and whatever you know I like guess I can talk to my daughter every day I can talk to my wife every day Where, I yeah. guess adversely do you feel like because of the situation you're in, maybe you have more of a stronger relationship with them because you understand what it means to be a gone and, and to be away and miss things. And and maybe that doesn't have to apply to just your wife and your kids, but like a, that's people. That's kind of a nuanced thing. Like I know that, um, like that being able to FaceTime with, with them It's special, you know what I mean? Like, it's a special thing. Uh, but uh, it's 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 not more or less than, like, uh, any other, you know, person who cares about their family. It's just a different way of doing it, you know? And if you care about your family, you figure out how to make things work for your family. And that's, yeah. And it just happens to be different in my situation. Kind of last question I'll ask you. What um, I'm yeah, pretty that's, sure that's heavy, dude. I'm sorry. <laughs> you, you, yeah, I, I snuck it I in. I love my girls. I snuck yeah. it in, man. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know how to get real on this. You've listened. Yeah, to the you told at least me once. you were too, man. I was waiting for it, dude. You did it, dude. <laughs> Your fucking Wawa tattoo, dude. <laughs> East Coast boy, represent till I die, man. I love Wawa's, dude. <sighs> Fuck sheets. All they got is boom boom sauce. Wow. Um, yeah, get you down and uh, see a, a Bucky's, dude. Dude, fuck Bucky's. Oh come on, dude. You gotta don't knock it till you try it. I, I have, I, mean, I have, I have tried Bucky's. Yeah, but all right, I mean, all right, all right, all right, all right. Just saying. All right, yeah. Um, we'll, um, we'll we'll talk. You we'll, can convince we'll me, but we'll I, you won't. Um, <laughs> so. In closing, obviously, um, you guys just finished up recording the new record. It's done, right? No, no. We took a... Uh, no. Uh, I thought I saw that all of you were in recording, like in the recording studio, recording very recently, no. I thought. No, we're uh, um, we're going home to do that. Like, we're spending I'm the whole sorry, summer. I'm sorry. Uh, maybe everything I saw Kyle and Kelly posting well, that, was, that was, was demoing, That was the plan, and we're do, we've done all that. Okay. Um, we had... We got we got the opportunity to go do this and and chose... I don't want to say chose. I don't want to... Um, we're doing this. For the opportunity. To go... No, to... Uh, um, to spend the whole summer working on a record. Okay. So, it would have been, um, it would have been touring all summer and writing a record before that and then going on tour. So, we chose, um, chose to do this and then flip the, flip the yeah, script on it. Yeah. So, it's, what can you tell us about the new record? I don't know. It's uh, it's gonna be good. <laughs> it's probably it's it'll be heavier. You know, we're always we're always pushing it. We're trying to, you know, push the boundaries and figure shit out. We always really uh, um, take what 
we've been doing and put that towards so we've been touring around with thrash metal bands <laughs> is that going to start coming it through may, like your set tonight a, there might be a song or two that's uh, you know heavier faster than you know what you've heard before we're always you know we're just the three of us man and we're going to figure it out as we go along you know it's honest it's real and lastly uh, where can people find you and or the band online Everywhere. <laughs> Everywhere. Mothership Everywhere something. <laughs> Mothership USA mostly. Uh, Mothership USA on Instagram. Mothership USA on Facebook. Um, uh, yeah. Spotify, iTunes, all that, you know. Awesome. Well, yeah. uh, thank you for taking the time to do this. I know uh, you were thank a little you, apprehensive at first. Uh, hopefully you, you enjoyed this. Yeah, and, I just uh, saw something I'm used to. But, uh <laughs> We'll, uh, but I like you, man. So uh, yeah, thank you. Yeah, we'll uh, finish these beers and uh, good to see you guys. And uh, hopefully, all right, cheers. Cheers. Here we go.